Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of JSF Made Easy, and I'm also an editor over at theserverside.com. And one of the things I want to talk to you about right now was doing some JSF development. Now, I've actually installed the JDK 1.6 and Tomcat 7 onto my Windows XP machine. I've thrown them right into underscore directories right off the C drive there. And what I'd like to do right now is put together a little JSF application. Now, if you're going to actually put together a JSF application, well, you'd be insane to do it this way. You'd probably want to get a IDE like NetBeans or some or Eclipse or something like that. But I'm actually just going to go old school, create a folder right off my C drive called underscore JSF. Sorry, underscore easy JSF. And I'm going to do all the basic stuff to create a Java web war file folder structure. And so that's going to be the root of my application, easy JSF right there. If you want to create a Java-based web application, you need a couple of important folders. One is the WebINF folder, all capital letters. And under WebINF, you usually have another folder called classes, where all your compiled classes go. You usually have another folder in there called lib, which you put all of your various libraries in. If we're actually going to be creating a JSF application, we're going to need a, a couple of different libraries. Now, I've downloaded the JSF implementation from Sun Microsystems. The JSF 2.0 is Ohara. I think that's named after a school of fish or something like that. And inside that lib directory, in that download, you'll see two files. You'll see the JSF API jar and the JSF impl jar. That's essentially the bytecode implementation of JSF 2.0. And I'm going to throw those right into the lib directory of my web application. Some people take these jar files and they throw them into the class path of their application server. I don't like that. I think that's bad. I think that's a, a bad design. I like to put them in the individual web application. That way, if the web application ever needs to upgrade, we can upgrade the individual one and not have to upgrade everything on the server. But I don't want to get into that whole discussion right now. That's just my personal preference. But here's a nice little folder structure for a Java, Java EE web application. I need these two files right here. That's the JSF implementation. However, if you actually want to do some JSF development, I believe that the data table tags use some JSTL tag libraries in them. So while right now we could probably put together a simple application just having these two jar files in here, once things get more complicated you need the jstl.jar file and you also need the standard.jar file which comes with the JSTL implementation. Now how do you get those jar files? Well one way to get them is to actually download them either from Sun or you can download them from the JSTL Apache project. One of the nice things is if you install Tomcat, you'll see that in the examples, the lib directory actually has the JSTL and you can't see it here because it's invisible right now, the standard.jar file. And I'm just going to cheat and copy from that particular folder and put those two files into my lib directory. So that's Tomcat, Web Apps, Examples, WebINF, Lib. Let's see if I can remember that. Tomcat, Web Apps, Examples, WebINF lib. There's the two jar files that come with that. And I'm just going to toss those right into the lib directory there. And that sets things up so that I've got basically all the jar files that I need in order to run a JSF application. So what else do I need to create and run a little JSF application? Well, I've made some notes here. Uh, I need the folder structure of a Java EE web application. I need some jar files. Probably need a web.xml file as well. Every good web application, every good war file has a web.xml file, a deployment descriptor. I've actually got one written out here. It's going to be the most basic war file that you could actually use for a JSF application. All I've got is a standard preamble stuff here. I've got a nice little display name, JSF made easy. Um, I've also got a servlet. So there's one key servlet that makes the whole JSF thing work, and that's the 
faces servlet. You can see javax.faces.webapp.faces servlet. In a JSF application, every single request that comes in goes to this particular servlet, and then this servlet figures out what various JSF components to dispatch to. So a web.xml file has to have an entry, a servlet entry for the faces servlet. And of course, you also need a mapping as well. And here, I'm going to do the mapping of star.faces, splat.faces. That means any request that comes in that ends in .faces, not .jsp, not .jsf, .faces, will get sent to this faces servlet, which is essentially the sort of entry point for the JSF framework. That means if I have JSPs, it won't go through JSF. If I have HTML files, it won't go through JSF. But anything that ends in .faces will. Then you can change that to .jsf, .faces, .face, whatever really turns your crank. So I'm just going to copy that, a little cheating here. I think you can get that on uh, my website. It's certainly in my book where you can copy it out. All of those deployment descriptors have to go in the WebINF folder. And so there's my web.xml file open it with notepad, paste all of that delicious information in there, save, and then we'll close her up. So what else do I actually need in my application? Well, one thing that I don't need actually right now is a facesconfig.xml file. And so you don't actually need that with JSF 2.0 because you can do a lot of stuff just with annotations. However, from time to time, there is actually something that needs to go in uh, the faces config configuration file. We try to get away from XML uh, as much as possible, but from time to time, you do actually need a faces config.xml file just for some, some global settings that you want to keep out of your, your view pages. So, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the faces config.xml file in here, although really right now I don't need it, and I've got nothing in here. So really, I've just got the preamble. I've got an open faces tag, a closed faces tag. But you know what? Hey, it's not too painful. Just throw it in there. Life is good. We're getting the, the basic structure that we need inside of the, the WebINF folder of our application. We've got a deployment descriptor. We've got our faces config.xml file. What else do we need if we actually want to have a, a sweet little application? 